Hello, everybody. It's 15 past now, so I'll start. <laughs> I'm the stand-in guy for, uh, for the, the presentation that was in the program was, uh, was one called Don't Just Build. And it was, uh, it was by my colleague who unfortunately couldn't be here. And I was his stand-in, but I didn't prepare his presentation. So I have another one for you. I hope you like. Um, uh, just a short word on, on, on what you missed, the Don't Just Build presentation. Uh, my colleague here, Jens, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, um, he's, uh, he's very good at uh, tweaking uh, Jenkins into very, very many different uh, things that it was certainly not meant to do. Uh, and he manages uh, quite large sums of, of, of servers and, and, and uh, repositories and, and, and setups and application management uh, and scheduling using uh, Jenkins. It's quite impressive, and I, I hope that we will be able to present that uh, material for you at least, or, or make some article and, and make that available. So, unfortunately, he's not here. <laughs> um, but he's Mr. Side Effects, and, and he'll, he'll, he'll fix uh, all that. This uh, presentation I have for you here is, is, uh, is about uh, a plugin that, that we made, um, uh, which enables uh, uh, ClickHS UZM is to use Jenkins. Um, but first, I'll just make, oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, and this is going all wrong. I want to start at the beginning, right? This is it. Okay. So, I'm not Jens. I'm Lars Kruse. And um, I come from a company called uh, Pragma. We are in Denmark. We're uh, quite a small company with just eight employees. Uh, what we do is that we help uh, companies set up their, uh, their tool chains, their tool stacks for system development process support. So, uh, so that would be anything from where you introduce your task management system, such as Jira, Foxbox, or whatever you use, and all the way until you actually do automated deployment into your product environment. So that tool stack you have in between that, we support that. And we uh, help people set it up, and we help them s uh, define their strategies for their companies. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, a lot of what we're doing uh, in between those two points is Jenkins development. Uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, Jenkins is kind of a, it plays a key role in, in this tool stack for, for most of the setups that we have. Um, these are some of the plugins that you will find available in Jenkins that we have uh, that we have developed, and uh, and what you see is that we actually we actually do sponsor development by the customers. So we have we have kind of a, a, a setup where we um, develop open source uh, plugins or uh, 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 um, stuff for our customers and deliver it back to the community, and then the customers pay us when it's available in the open source community. So it's kind of a three-way round uh, setup that we have. Uh, and using this setup, we have, uh, we have uh, created plugins for, uh, for Sony Ericsson, uh, which actually fixes uh, a very old issue in, uh, in Jenkins that uh, the matrix built, which you are probably familiar with, um, uh, it, it doesn't, it's not capable actually of, of rebuilding uh, without actually rebuilding everything. So if you have uh, very large uh, matrices, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's, it's tedious actually to make that work. So we have made a plugin that would actually enable you to reload just some of the builds in the, in the, in the matrix. Um, we also have a small uh, plugin called uh, Munkit, which actually was uh, a, a very important part of what Jens was supposed to present to you. Uh, Munkit is a small kit. It's an XSD, uh, a, a, a format in which you can report stuff uh, uh, using an API, which is currently available in, in Java. And, uh, and uh, that will produce an XML file, which you can have a plugin uh, that will show uh, for you. The, so what, what the Munkit plugin will do is that you can, you can, you can actually monitor anything whatever it is, and put it into this XML file. And once you have this XML file in this strict format, you can just uh, have the Monkey plugin, plugin show that XML file. So you can make graphs of anything, right, using this 
small kit. It's available out there. Uh, um, unfortunately, uh, Jens um, isn't here, so. <laughs> we have a plugin, uh, which is a small wrapper around uh, a, a doctor memory, a memory leak uh, tool uh, used by uh, C for, for C++ uh, programming. And we made a, a plugin for PRQA, a large uh, uh, a company that makes uh, static code analysis tools that are MISRA uh, compliant. So it's used by all the motor industries in the entire world. So, so we made a plugin for their tool for Jenkins. We released it like two weeks ago. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about the Clearcase UCM plugin. How it came about and, 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 uh, and, and what what features we have put in there, because we think that there are features in there that should be in every SCM plugin. So uh, I hope that you will actually uh, uh, um, um, come with some of your contributions on what you, what you need when, when it comes to pre-tested commits. Uh, the story about uh, the plugin is that it was originally developed for Novo Nordic, a, a large Danish company that uh, produces insulin uh, for diabetic uh, um, they, they uh, make software that are regulated by the FDA regulatory rules. Um, so uh, so uh, they have a very high standard for, for, for quality um, and they use Clearcase. So uh, we work for them helping setting up their tool stack as I described. And uh, uh, the problem was that there was no uh, uh, Clearcase plugin that we could use uh, with Novo Nordic because they are not using base Clearcase, they are using UCM. How, how many of you know Clearcase? Okay, that's good. So you know the distinction between base Clearcase and UCM. Yeah, base Clearcase. Just for those who didn't put up your hands, base Clearcase is just uh, the the basic functionality of Clearcase available to you, and you will have to do all your processing on top of that. UCM is a kind of a process framework provided by IBM, originally by Atria, then later Rational, then IBM. Uh, uh, which actually put some kind of a, a process uh, uh, on top of Clearcase, which actually makes it work uh, compared to base Clearcase, which basically doesn't work. Um, so so, so uh, when we came to use this, we wanted to, to use the Clearcase uh, plugin for, for Jenkins uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Novo Nordic. We found that the plugin that's out there wasn't in any way compliant with, uh, with, uh, with UCM terminology. So, uh, and they, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time we were looking at it, it didn't support uh, uh, um, uh, UCM. The, the, the Clearcase uh, plugin originally was triggered by the fact that there were new versions on the branch, but a branch is not even a, uh, an object you use in, in UCM. You talk about streams. So it's, it, it was very low level. So we went in there and tried to, to, uh, to join that project, but uh, Novo Nordic uh, 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 did not validate the Java language. language. So we couldn't uh, provide features for, for Novo Nordic at that point that would, that would uh, support this uh, pro uh, plugin. So we made a solution instead for Novo Nordic in Perl, a Perl script, a, a, colle a, a collection of Perl script that would do the same job and later Gonfas, another very large Danish company uh, who produces pumps. You have one of their pumps in your homes, I, I believe. Uh, they paid us actually to migrate uh, the Perl scripts from Novo Nordic into a genuine Jenkins plugin that would support uh, these features that we have developed from Nord Nord Novo Nordic. And then later when it was uh, shipped the first time, Novo Nordic would skip their Perl scripts and start using this plugin instead. So, so actually, the, this plugin is maintained by Novo Nordic and Grundfos today. It's used in their production environment. So they are the, the main uh, contributors, actually, uh, with us as a proxy delivery. <laughs> um, but it supports uh, pre-tested deliveries, which is actually the most interesting part today. Um, these are the highlights of the plugin. Uh, one of the things we wanted to do, which was very different from the, uh, the, uh, the uh, original uh, Clearcase plugin, was that we want to create a simple interface. In the original plugin, you would have to type in the config spec for the view that should actually build. Uh, uh, we said, well, in UCM, that's one of the points. 
you don't need all that uh, configuration uh, uh, put into the plugin because if, if you just give me a string, a stream and a component, I can actually derive all the information from the stream and the component name that is sufficient for me to set up a view that I can work in. So I'll just do that. So I'll just provide you with a very, very simple interface instead of that not very simple one that was in there. So that was one of the, the main features that we wanted to achieve and then a real support for the UCM terminology. Uh, uh, um, it can pull in changes from other streams. Uh, so from, from, uh, from streams that are child streams, you can actually make it pull on, 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 on streams that would like to deliver into this project integration stream and then it will actually do that delivery. Um, it can persist the results in the version control system. So uh, when you have a build, you'll get a build result and you will see that build result in your uh, uh, Jenkins server. What we do is that we also enable actually to store that information in ClearCase. Uh, one simple thing we do is that we flip the promotion level of the baseline that we're building, but we also actually put a tag on the, on the baseline actually uh, showing the highlights of, 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 of the build results. So you can actually browse this information in ClearCase afterwards if you want it. Um, um, it builds the baselines, which would be commits in any other version control system, in a sequence. All, most other uh, 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 SCM plugins out there, if, if, you, if you just push build now, it will, uh, it will actually build the latest version that are available from, from the source, the repository that you're pointing at. Our plugin will actually uh, build the next one, and if the next one is already built, it will say, there's nothing to do. I mean, you build everything. So what you want to do is that if you want to force a build, you would have to go back into uh, ClearCase and actually flip the promotion level back in, in, the, in, the, in, the ver in the version control system and say, this is, not, this is not actually approved. And then the next time you actually run this plugin, it will say, I found something, and then it will build it again, right? But it will build everything in a sequence. Well, there is support for the, uh, the obvious uh, uh, features that you have know for other uh, uh, plugins, but this is the feature that we've implemented first. Um, uh, it, a very special thing about our plugin is, uh, is, uh, is uh, that it has a footprint not only in the, in the pre-build steps, but also in the post-build step. So, uh, so our plugin is kind of a wrapper around the build, the build step. So, um, and it supports posted deliveries, which is a clear case feature, which is really, really, really ugly if you use multi-site. I, I, I hope you're not using that feature, but if you are, you really need our plugin because that, that makes it work. This is, uh, this is how it's, it looks in, uh, in, the, uh, in the user interface. Uh, I'll actually, I'll take you to, sorry. This is a live uh, environment that we have uh, available. You can actually go into this website, codepragma.net slash cclab, and you can see these uh, for real. Um, if I go in here and configure it, because then I can show you some of the drop downs in the, in the help menus. This is our plugin as it comes up here. So, so the only thing that we are asking people is, what is the stream that you want to build? It's similar to a branch in, in, in Git or Mercurial. So what is the component a component in ClearCase is very similar to a repository if you were in, in, in Git or Subversion or Mercurial. So, so what, is, what, is the, what is your repository? What is your component that you want to build? And that's the only thing that is actually of interest. This component might actually be a composite component. So it actually might be a component that embraces other components, which embraces other components. Like you would use the sub-repository components, uh, the features of, of Git and Mercurial and, and Subversion. Um, then this is, this is the nice part because we don't have a config spec in here. We just ask the, the, the user, how much do you want to load? Everything? Or do you just want to load the modifiable components? And then, uh, then we can derive the config spec and the load uh, rules based on that. Uh, so we don't have to ask any more questions about what are the properties of your view. Um, then in the polling, we have actually three different uh, stages. You can poll uh, the stream itself, which is actually the stream which is mentioned in the first uh, field. So, so 
So that means that that is the place that I'm actually looking for new versions and new baselines in. Or you can pull your child streams, which is in, in ClearCase, you have a, a concept of an integration stream and a lot of development streams underneath it. So what we're doing is that we say, are there any uh, development streams in the landscape beneath us that have proclaimed that they're ready to be integrated? If there are, then that's what we're pulling. And this one is a kind of a, a special thing in ClearCase because they, 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 they differ a little bit if, if you want to, to move from one branch to another, if it's a child stream or if it's a sibling stream, if, if it's an inter-project delivery or if it's an in-project delivery. That's clear case technical, but it, I mean, in any other version control system, you wouldn't have to implement both, but we need to do that in clear case. Um, but, the, but the thing is that we're now able actually to pull our development streams beneath uh, the integration stream. Uh, then we have a feature here that it should create a baseline. It's quite obvious in our plugin that you want to do that because, I mean, it's clear case is free for you not to do it. But it doesn't make any sense because we need to have something in here which resembles a commit in any other version control system, and that would be a baseline. So you need to create a baseline. Uh, but the thing is, if you want to create a baseline, what should the name of that baseline be? So we came up with a solution where you can actually put in different uh, keywords in there, and, and based on those keywords, you would actually uh, construct a, a, a baseline. If I, if I click here, you can see that we, we support uh, keywords like stream and project and component and, and the version and the build number and stuff like that. And we even support that you can, you can uh, put in there the, the constant of an environment variable or you can point out a file and you can basically just pour in the content of that file into your, uh, uh, I mean, so, I mean, you can basically name your version control, uh, the, your baseline, anything based on, uh, based on this uh, concept. Um, uh, that's it. And then we have a set description. The set description actually, uh, uh, wh what it does is that it actually uh, puts the information out here in the left margin about the build. So it doesn't just show the build with the, with the, with the link to the, to the actual build, but it gives you some kind of the highlight. So it will uh, tell you um, which baseline it found, what promotion level that had, that ended up with, and what the new baseline that it created is called. So that information is, is, is put in there. Yeah, you had a question? No, I do not support dynamic views. And I have a reason for that. Um, but I, I, I will tell you later, if we can, we can come into that. I had the same question here. So, uh, so we have chosen not to support dynamic views. And that is because we believe that they're not right to support in this context. We, we need, we need Actually, one of the things we wanted to do was we wanted to make a, a clear case SCM component, which was very much the same as the one you would use if you were using Mercurial or Git or Subversion, right? They do not have dynamic views. What you do is that you load your, you, you load your stuff into your workspace, which is part of the job that you're, that you're building, because you want that file to be available native to the Jenkins slave. Uh, I mean, you, you saw presentations where you would have to browse uh, 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 code coverage information and, st and stuff like that. The warnings modules would actually take you into the code and show you a specific code line. So you need to have the code available. I mean, uh, uh, in a dynamic view in clear case is kind of a fragile structure when you want to do that. No, no, performance-wise, we actually we optimize the performance. So uh, it, it's, it, uh, what we do is that we use a very special type of branch in ClearCase, which is a read-only branch, which has very uh, 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 specific uh, features. What it enables us to do is that since it's read-only, we can reuse it again and again and again. We can use it many times. So every time we create a new branch, uh, we, we, set up, we, we create a branch which is derived from the job name. So we create that branch and we load it. And since it's read-only, the next time we have to run the same uh, 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 job, uh, we only have to actually load the difference between those two branches. So you, if you actually built in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a continuous way, uh, uh, you should, right? Continuous integration. Hmm. So, so if you build continuously, the, the, the differences between the two branches are quite small. So it actually, it's only the first load that is, uh, that is heavy, like, like you would see in, in Mercurial or Gitter Bazaar, because the next one is just a reuse. It, it, it really has impressive performance. I didn't say that. 
but we are very inspired by the approach that Git and Mercurial uses. So, so we used the same approach. We didn't get the same performance, though. So. <laughs> uh, but we thought about we thought about the the, the performance. Okay. Um, okay. Let me get back to the uh, to the uh, presentation here. So. So just to take some of all the clear case issues out of this and, and make it a more you know uh, uh, make it kind of interesting for all those of you who aren't using clear case. Uh, um, and actually, maybe just a show of hands, uh, I saw your clear case users. Actually, I asked how many of you know clear case. So now I want to ask how many of you use clear case? Uh, that's a different one. How many of you use Mercurial? Git? Subversion? CVS? Ah, damn. <laughs> Okay, subversion, subversion seems to be the, the, the main one. Then Git, and then Material, uh, and, and, and then ClearCase, actually. So, I mean, we also use Git. Very, we, we use Git for all our open source environment, and we use Material for all our uh, 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 proprietary products which we make for, for, for our customers, and we don't use ClearCase ourselves. Um, <laughs> uh, but we have been working with ClearCase for 15 years. Uh, so, so we know ClearCase very well. Uh, that's why we don't use it anymore. Um, <clears throat> originally, actually, uh, uh, so Kazuki came in here, so now I, I, I'm actually quoting him now, so I'm, I'm, I hope that I'm doing it right. There is an issue out there, issue number 1682, which is about uh, a feature, uh, the, 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 the pre-tested commit feature it basically just says that it would be nice if Hudson provided pre-tested commit feature, features similar to Team Cities, Team Cities, sorry, um, and uh, and then there is uh, uh, 100 comments on that piece of information. Uh, uh, at some point, Kosuke came up with a, with a design proposal. I would call it a small article out there where he actually suggests that this is one of the ways that they, this could be done. Uh, so, uh, calling for some kind of a general approach to how we should make software uh, SCM plugins actually uh, capable of, of dealing with pre-tested commits. Uh, there are some good design proposals uh, in there, and uh, and uh, we would like to see that 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 this would actually become uh, an extension into the SCM uh, 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 extension point, so that this could be implemented in in all the uh, SCM plugins. Uh, what we did is that we, uh, we, we went down and implemented this in the ClearCase uh, UZM plugin. And I know that Kusuga, he didn't, he didn't actually, uh, he, he went and, and implemented for the GitHub plugin. So we're kind of divided now, right? We should join together. I also did for subversion. You also did for subversion. So, so the question is, do you, do you want to do this in a generic way or do you want to do it by one by one, right? So now you have it in subversion, you have it in GitHub, you have it in ClearCase UZM. So, but should it be a generic one, or should we go and implement it one by one in all the, 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 the plugins? Anyway, if you want to do it one by one, here's one way that you can do it. So, so here's how we did it. Um, um, first of all, this is just a recap. I mean, I'm sure you know this. Just, just to fill you in, and there are kind of four steps in, in, a, in, a, in a job and a, and, a, and, a, and a built in Jenkins. The job, uh, which is the built description, sort of uh, the static method of the object. So, so, so the job has a polar, and the polar will be scheduled by some mean, and then it will go and ask the version control system, is there anything for me to do, yes or no? If there is, it will create a build, and then you have a build instance. And if there aren't, then that's it. Then we'll pull again later, okay? So, so, so those are the, the steps. Typically, what happens in the uh, SCM plugins is that you're, you're working in the, 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 the polar session and the pre-build uh, step. I mean, the only extension, the extension board for the SCM only has a footprint in the pre-build step. So you're supposed to do something. You're supposed to communicate with your version control system, figure out if, if there's anything, uh, uh, sorry, create a workspace with a version that is interesting, and then deliver that workspace to the build step, which will then proceed, right? That's, that's the way we do it. What we did is that we wrapped this up, so we actually also have a post-build step. 
So we implement a way that you can, you, can, you can actually say that you want to bring in code from somewhere else, from another branch. So that's part of the, the w w when you do the checkout, you actually go and find the branch that are in turn to do the delivery into the integration stream and you merge that stuff in, right? And then you deliver that workspace, the integrated workspace uh, to the build step. And then when the build step is finished, the build step will deliver information about how are we doing? Are we, are we, are we, are we good? Are we unstable? Are we safe? What, what happened? And that information is actually then provided back to the SCM plugin in the post build step and say, I want to act on that. So I would like to do either a commit uh, of the changes that are in the workspace or I would like to reject them. So this way you can have your build step do all your validation. Um, this is just a picture of, of how Jenkins architecture, the point here is in, in our plugin that when we came up first with this, we actually did the polling on the master. So, so it was a master that would actually go and ask clear case, is there anything to do? And then when that was answered yes or no, we would create the pipe to the slave and hand that, the rest of the, 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 the steps over to the, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, slave. But the point is that we found out is that you actually need to establish that uh, uh, pipe to the slave immediately and also do the polling on the slave. By that, I mean, the one thing you get from that is that the, the clear case uh, 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 licenses are tremendously expensive. So by doing that, you, you can actually uh, avoid that the master actually needs a clear case uh, license. But another thing is that you can actually support clear case multi-site. How many of you know clear case multi-site? Oh, you poor ones. I mean, that's, that's not a way, place you want to be either, unless you have our plugin, right? Um, but we support that now by this uh, approach that nothing actually happens on the, on, on, the, on the master. Everything is done on the slave. The branchy approach is actually a phrase cornered by, uh, by Kosuke in his article, where he suggests that instead of actually uh, uh, providing the solution for a pre-tested commit, uh, using the tool or the IDE or the plugin or kind of a shelf feature like the team city has or whatever, you can use a branchy approach. You can, you can, you can have a version control system that actually support branches and, and, and you can make this, this, uh, this pre-tested uh, set up a matter of if you are in one branch or in another branch, right? Branches are just contexts, right? So if you have a, a version control system that supports different context branches, you can actually bring it from one branch to another. So if you start using branches, I mean, this is suddenly not so difficult actually to achieve as if you're not doing branches. So we advocate for a branchy approach. Now here's some UCM wisdom. This is the, the ideal UCM scenario. It's, it's a textbook stuff from, from uh, IBM Rational Atria. What you do is that you have an integration stream and then you have a development stream. So you work on your own development stream. Then you fix some issue isolated on your integration stream. You shouldn't be isolated too long, right? It's continuous integration, right? So you, when you have fixed this issue, you will have to deliver it back. So what you do is that you build and you test it. If it works, sorry, you deliver it. And what you do is that you build and you test it. Because this might be different, right? There might be uh, uh, developers on the left side that I haven't showed in this picture that actually has delivered something into the integration stream since I branched off from it. So, so that would, that would, that's basically the rebase issue that we talked about. I, I didn't picture it here, but it could happen, right? So we need to test again, obviously. So I don't need to rebase, but I do need to test. That's what I'm saying. So if it works, I'll commit it, right? But if it doesn't work, I revoke it. So this way, I can keep my project integration stream pristine, right? The idea in, 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 in ClearCase UCM is that when you do a deliver, it says you should now test your stuff in the, in the, in the deliver view, and if you're, if you're done, you should complete it. Th that's, that's how it works. I mean, can you see how much this actually resembles a, a kind of a, a, a traditional uh, a pull uh, approach from an open source environment? Or there would, there would be people that would guard the core of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of the product. They would be gatekeepers or core committers or whatever. And when we want to do changes, what we want to do is that we want to fork out 
make make that suggestion to that change. So we don't. So we don't. So what we do is that we propose a change, right? And when I have done something which I think w is working, I make a pull request, right? Somebody should pull this in, and then this somebody is actually in an open source environment. It would. It would. It would typically be somebody like Kazuka or, or some guy with a cab on saying, I'm deciding here, right? I, I need to take this stuff in, see if it works, and if it doesn't, then I'll, I'll reject it. And if it does, then I'll pull it in, right? So this approach is the same approach that we're trying to set up. We just, we just advocate that Jenkins is the person in the middle, right? So it's the build steps that you actually produce in there in your build step that is this gatekeeper if he's able to validate your integration, then it works. If he isn't, then it doesn't work, right? So there is no review line or review queue that you end up as you sometimes do in an open source environment. Sorry, because okay. But you do sometimes end up in a review line. I mean, you can be ready, but there's nobody to pull your stuff in because it's a human action, right? But this is actually something that you can set a machine to do. So this is just the same stuff in, a, in the textual uh, writing, so you have it on your slides if you want it. So what we have is that our approach to branching is based on the model, B model for test. How, how many of you know this model? Okay. I went to Google and I browsed V model for test and I typed that I only want to see the images and I have 205 million pictures showing the VMOD for test. It's very, very common. You should, you should know it, right? So how many of you know the VMOD for test? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> okay. The point is that um, on the left-hand side, you have your requirements. On the right-hand side, you have your test. And the idea is that one level of requirement is corresponding with one level of test. So if you're high up and you have a, a system requirements, you would have an acceptance test. Or if you're in the bottom, you would have a, a, a kind of a design a, a, a document uh, and, a, and a unit test, right? So uh, the further apart they are, uh, the more seldom they appear, right? So, so you don't do acceptance test as often as you do unit test, right? So, okay. Well, another important thing about the V model for test is that it's, it's a layered model, right? So it's a one-to-one -one relationship uh, uh, between the left side and the right-hand side. So you're, you're, you're not somewhere in between one level, right? You're in one level or in another level. You have module test and integration test. You don't have anything in between that. You're either there or you're somewhere else, right? That's the idea. So what we come up with is that the branches are actually showing the context. And, and you want to, to have the different uh, level of test actually show the different level of branches. In the middle, you have the project integration branch. This is where everything comes together. This is where the, the, the people ha will have to actually merge in their changes and, 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 uh, and comply with their colleagues, right? Below the project integration streams, you have development streams. There are team streams or development streams or feature streams or whatever you call them. Basically, what you do here is that you are allowed to make commits, right? directly on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the branch you have. At some point, you might think that you're ready, and then you can deliver it, or push it, or commit it, or whatever you want to call it, into the project integration branch. So, now we, uh, now we, de now we have dealt with all the file integrations, right? So we, we made things come together. So we test stuff in the, in the project integration stream, and if, if it's acceptable by the means that we're testing with, we want to validate it. Then we push it up. All the branches about the project integration stream are referred to as release streams. So you could release into stable, or you could release from stable into release, or you could release from release into maintenance or whatever. Basically, all the, the branches about the uh, project integration branch, they're just harvesting things that are done other places. So you actually don't make changes. You just put it to another branch. So you might ask, why bother to put it on another branch? because you want to enter into some kind of a different approach, right? One man is another man's ceiling, right? If I want to validate something in one scope, I'm, I might claim that I'm ready, right? So in the project integration stream, it's a stream that I'm sharing with all my colleagues. I'm ready when the unit test works. The build doesn't break and the unit test works. That's good enough for me. But if I want to hand it out to my testers, 
I want to make sure that coverage about is, is higher than my threshold. I want to make sure that all the, the, the tests are also running both in me, in, 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 um, in, in my target and in my simulated environment. I want to, I mean, there are lots of things I want to be sure of if I want to involve the testers, which are different things I want to make validate if I want to just involve my colleagues in the project. So there are different contexts. And that's the reason why you move it from one branch to another, because they're different contexts. This phrase here, um, um, software validation is from uh, Novo Nordic, because uh, I mean we could return to the original title of this presentation, don't just build. Because when you want to validate, you don't just build. Back in the old times, we would say that we were doing nightly builds, right? But actually, it's many years ago that we even started doing coverage and unit testing. So we don't just build, we do a lot of stuff. And if we want to do all this stuff, it takes hours. In Nova Nordic, actually, from, from the first commit into the project integration stream and until we actually had a, a genuine release candidate, we have had seven Jenkins servers manipulate the same code base for 32 hours. And I mean, but you cannot commit and then wait 32 hours for, for actually to, to, to get information about am I okay, right? So, so in one context, in the con in project integration stream, you want a quick feedback. That's what you want there. So you, 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 you compile your code, you run your unit test, and you make sure that, that neither of those actually break the code, right? But in another context, you might put more information in there. So you, it's a divide and conquer thing. The clear case UCM plugin will actually, if you're polling in self mode, which is the same mode as Git and Mercurial and Subversion would normally run in, is that I, I want to make sure, I want to see are there, are there any new commits on the stream that I put in there? Uh, if there are, build them. So I'm piling on a promotion level. So if it has the promotion level initial, a promotion level is a, is a piece of metadata available in ClearCase. Um, it's, a, it's a descriptor of the, uh, of the state of the baseline. So are there any baselines that are in promotion level initial? I'll pull for that. Then I'll do a pre-build, I'll set up the workspace, then I'll build, and then the post-build step will actually uh, take that information and, and whether or not this was approved or not, I will flip the promotion level. If it's okay, I will flip to the next one, which in UCM context is built from initial to build, and if it fails, I will reject it, right? So I'm just flipping uh, a piece of metadata in clear case. That's all I do in this mode. If I run in child mode, this is the same picture as I showed you before, the ideal UCM scenario. So I have a, a bunch of child streams and what I'm doing is that I'm actually in the poll mode. I will look for child streams that supposedly would deliver into this integration stream and I will see if they have any baselines that are initial. So in clear case, what a, what a, what a, what a, a developer would do is actually to call for the gatekeeper or the core committer to make his pull. His pull request is that he makes a baseline on his development stream. That's not a very common thing to do in ClearCase UCM. Normally baselines are made on the project integration streams or the release streams. But if you make one on the development stream, that's a signal. Now you're now signaling to, to Jenkins that you want to make a pull request. And that's what we're pulling for us. And we, if we find any, we'll actually integrate them. So we'll do the deliver. If, 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 it, if, it, if the merge fails, the build fails, right? But if it merge doesn't fail, we'll hand it over to the build step which will build, and then we will actually, if it's succeeded, we will actually create a new baseline, which then is initial. And then I can have another job, which is pulling in self mode on initial. So I have one job that's pulling it in, another one that's doing the code coverage, another one that's doing the static code analysis, another one that is actually pulling it from the project integration screen into stable, where the testers can use it. So you have the whole continuous delivery chain set up by these pull mechanisms. This is, uh, this is just the, uh, uh, this is not interesting unless you're in, uh, in clear case. These are the concerns that, uh, that we have about other VCS if we should implement something like that. I mean, you would have to adopt to the branchy approach. If you don't like that, I mean, we cannot make this work the branchy way, then you would have to shelf it or something like Team City does. Um, 
Even in distributed version control systems like Bazaar and, and Git and Mercurial, where it's very common not to branch, what you do is that you create a clone and then you just push that back onto your uh, uh, original repository. I mean, even there you would have to do branches, right? Because you're not communicating between uh, clones, you're communicating uh, in internally in a repository. So you will have to start even there using your branchy approach. Um, the validation should be the build step. Um, so the SCM plugin would have to have another method in the extension point. It's kind of a wrap up method saying that, am I okay? Should I do the reject or should I do the commit? What is it, right? So that information is not available right now. So our plugin is actually a combination of two extension points. The UCM plugin extends the SCM plugin extension point and the notify extension points because we need to have a footprint in the post build step. This is different. Um, so we need some way to come up with identifying child branches. This is, this is a, a no brainer in Clearcase. It's part of the concept in Clearcase, but it's not part of the concept in Git or Mercurial. Right? So you would have to, how should I identify those? Our recommendation is that you basically just describe a regular expression in the interface, and if the branch names matches those regular uh, expressions, then they're of interest. I'll, I'll scan them. For what? A new commit. I'm looking for baselines with the promotion level that I specified, which from child polling would be initial, so typically. Instead of uh, doing a deliver, uh, deliver, just uh, create a baseline of Yeah, yeah. Push is ugly. Okay. I mean, it's, 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 the, it's a new dawn, it's a new way of working. We're all, we're all just pulling, right? So nobody's pushing anything. Nobody actually has access to writing anything into the project integration stream in, in Grundfos and Novo Nordic where we set this up. It's shut down. The only process that is capable actually of altering the content of the project integration stream is the process that is running the, Jen the Jenkins slaves. Nobody else can change it. So the only way that you can get stuff into the project integration stream is to do the right thing and proclaim that you're ready. That's how you do it. There's no other way. Yes, 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 yes. It would reject the baseline on the, on the child stream. So if you try to pull in a baseline from a child stream and it doesn't work, then that baseline out there on the development stream will have its promotion and flip from initial to rejected. Yeah. Um, and we need to build chrono uh, in a chronological way. Uh, uh, and we need to keep track of how far we got. I mean, we do that in Clearcase, in the Clearcase UCM plugin, but if you were in Subversion or in, 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 in anywhere else, you wouldn't have that piece of metadata to manipulate, so you would have to actually have the built uh, uh, plugin uh, manage that piece of information. It's not a problem, but, but the thing is that we do need to extend the SCM extension point if we want to do this in a generic way. Do you want pre-tested commits in your SCM plugins besides GitHub and Subversion and Clickcase UCM. Do you want them or do you, don't you want them? Yes, no? You don't care? You don't want to pull? You want to push? Actually, just to, to wrap that up, in, in, in Mercurial, if you try to push and you would create two heads, it doesn't tell you that you're not allowed to do that. It actually suggests you that you should use the dash force parameter, which should actually just force it in, right? How many novices out there would actually force a Mercurial commit into actually breaking the central repository? They shouldn't even have access to write on that repository. It's a pull paradigm. That's it. <laughs>